What up everybody? Welcome back once again to the channel. Now if you guys follow us, you know just the other day we released a video in a battle of the brand new i5 8600K versus the Ryzen 5 1600X. And you guys asked why we didn't actually bring any DirectX 12 testing to the table. And I'll tell you why. Because we're trying to bring you guys those other low numbers. And in DirectX 12 testing, we're not able to do that. We're really only able to give you guys just the average frames per second the way the testing and stuff is done that way. Now in the future when that changes, we'll change that as well. Now obviously if you guys follow us, you know which test systems that we use and everything else, but if for some reason you don't know the test systems in our test system, right off the bat, here is our Intel based test system. You guys can see all the numbers and everything there for that. And for those guys who are wondering, hey, what's your AMD system, man? Well, here's the numbers for our AMD system as well. Both the parts for these systems, and I'm talking about the parts alone, not the case that we actually did on the full system build, are pretty much equivalent to the same price range. The Intel CPU, like I said before, is about $50 more expensive than the AMD thing. And I know also that people said, hey, we could use a B350 motherboard and bring things down a little cheaper. You can do that, but I think you'll be sacrificing a wee bit of performance. You you kind of want to keep things, I feel, especially if you're a gamer, to try to keep things as top end as possible, unless you're totally doing a budget build. Now, I know that traditionally people tend to lean on the side saying that, hey, anything that's made by AMD is going to do better in DirectX 12. I think you guys will be surprised. It's kind of a big trade off between the two as far as that stuff goes in the test systems. But with that said, though, let's jump in and let's check out those benchmark scores. All right, folks, so there you have it. The same battle that we brought you guys in the previous video, and for some reason, if you're wondering about temps and all that stuff, please check out our previous video that we did, which was the full-on battle. This was just the DirectX 12 battle, and you guys can see that in a lot of games, hey, I gotta say it, the Vega 64 is actually winning against the 1080 in many instances, especially in like games like The Division. You guys can see there's a big gap right there, regardless of which CPU that you are using. Now, in the previous video, we also saw though, that as far as those you know low numbers, on the AMD side of thing, they were actually losing. The Intel CPU did a lot better and maintained higher frame rates across the board much better. But now that we jumped into the DirectX 12 environment, you can see in a lot of cases though, if you're a Vega 64 owner, that hey, these CPUs are actually close, but I gotta say, it looks like AMD is edging just a little bit ahead when it comes to DirectX 12 gaming. Hopefully, NVIDIA will get their act together and bring that stuff around the corner with more drivers and stuff. But for now, I'm gonna say that AMD is probably winning in the DirectX 12 environment. Plus, I think that we were all expecting that as well. I'm Elric, you guys have been watching Tech Tomorrow. Like usual, all of our tests and everything that we did are all down below. Obviously, I know you guys are wondering what do we use for drivers and all that stuff. We always use the latest drivers we can get our hands on, ones that are qualified and that we know are going to work. And we always use the latest edition of Windows 10 if you guys are wondering that as well. So peace out. Our next battle is the overclocking battle. So stay tuned to Tech of Tomorrow.